What's going on, everybody? Trevor Sikama here for another edition of TDN's live mock draft series. It is a very special episode this week because it is mid-free agency. I don't want to quite say post-free agency because there's still a bunch of big names that could sign and impact some teams. But as we said on Sunday's episode, we wanted to do a pre-free agency, a mid-free agency, and a full post free agency mock draft here we are we're this is this is the big one i, I feel like this is the one that people are going to care about most because it's the first mock draft that we are doing after a lot of these big signings happen and a lot of draft needs have changed and so for such an important mock draft i had to bring out the big guns so for with me today i have as my guest kyle yates who is the co-host of the fantasy pros podcast he is really a do-it-all man for everything football over at fantasy pros also a huge draft nut which is why i had to get him on for this mock draft kyle appreciate you joining me for such an exciting mock draft man absolutely the uh bar is set pretty high man because this is just chaos it, the past few days have just been chaos of me in my master spreadsheet trying to keep track of everything i'm <laughs> sure that something has fallen through the cracks so i'm gonna make a pick guaranteed i'm gonna make a pick and you'll be like oh they solved that in free agency i'm like yeah i missed that uh, so I got to raise the bar here. I got to make sure that I, I hit everything. See, you can't be saying that because the big reason why I had you on is because I wanted you to keep me in check because I know you got the spreadsheets and you're keeping track of everything that could happen because, you know, your brand is everything that happens with fantasy football. And of course, if a receiver or running back or something goes to a certain place, you got to pay attention to it. But we'll be fine. We'll be able to navigate this one pretty well. As you guys would expect, it is a full first round mock draft. So it's going to be a first round mock format where I am picking for the even teams. Kyle is picking for the odd teams. Before we get there, though, since I am picking for the even teams and you won't have as much of a chance to talk about it, Kyle, you are a noted Chicago Bears fan. And I just got to ask you, how does it feel settling for? There it is. He got the hat on and everything. I didn't even know that. How does it feel settling for Andy Dalton as opposed to Russell Wilson? Would you say it's a one and one? Would you say, you know, they're pretty close? Ah, you, you missed out on one, but you're cool with the other. Oh, yeah, 100. No, uh, this, is, <laughs> this is rough, man. This is the life of a Bears fan right now that we were this close to Russell Wilson. Of course, all the reports coming up that we were ready to offer just everything in the kitchen sink for Russell yeah. Wilson. We came super close, and then Pete Carroll said at the last minute, Nope, I'm keeping Russ. So uh, settling for, you know, Andy Dalton in a vacuum, like Andy Dalton, he's fine. You know, like fine is, is how I would categorize Andy Dalton. He's certainly sure. I think, better than Trubisky or Foles and what we've had recently. But when you have this kind of in your mind and you were so close to getting Russell Wilson, going to Andy Dalton is certainly a uh, a kick in the shins there. So We'll see. I don't think that the door is completely closed. Uh, I don't think that Andy Dalton is going to be our starter long term. If it is, yeah. I might cry, but we'll. Uh, we'll <laughs> you know, I think that draft fans everywhere can relate to that sentiment because every year, no matter what team you're a fan of, you hype yourself up and you think like, oh, man, like what if my team drafts this guy? And then they draft somebody that you have no interest in right. at all whatsoever. So I'm sure the people out there who are watching this can uh, can empathize with that feeling, whether it's for Russell Wilson or not. But let's get this mock draft rolling because we got a lot of picks that we got to get to, a lot of free agency to talk about. And since you are selecting at number one overall, you get to start us off. You're up with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hey, did anything the Jaguars did on day two of the tampering period sway you from Trevor Lawrence? Okay, probably not. No, probably not. No, uh, since uh, since October or I mean, even October of 2019, we could have said mm -hmm. that Trevor Lawrence was going to be the number one overall pick. And that was there was a brief moment where we could have said, oh, Justin Fields in the college football playoff. That would have been great. And now once once Urban Meyer was hired on as the uh, as the head yeah. coach there, that was pretty much cementing it that Trevor Lawrence is going to be the number one overall pick. Of course, Urban Meyer, like on the uh, field for his pro day while every other coach is standing on the sideline, you know, like, no, nah, this is Trevor Lawrence at number one overall. Right. I agree with you. We'll get to, to some of the Jags picks uh, later in the draft because, of course, they have the second first round pick as well. New York Jets now up at number two. They added guys like Corey Davis, Carl Lawson. Gerard Davis, they uh, franchise tag Marcus May. And so they were pretty active in free agency. Maybe they're not done yet. And so they have a, a lot of guys that they could still have on the table. <laughs> Rob is telling me on the back. Rob is producing this podcast or this uh, th th this live stream. And he's telling me on the backside, like, let him run it back with Darnold. 
I think he's just saying that because we did the hear me out episode for episode one with Darnold. He wants it to come true. That's not going to, that's not going to happen. I'm still going quarterback at number two. I often go Zach Wilson here, but I think Zach Wilson and Justin Fields is really close. I think it can be one or the other. I think I go with Zach Wilson the most because I believe that's what's going to happen, but I'll switch it up a little bit here. I'll go Justin Fields at number two because I, 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 you know, when I evaluate him, I really did think that it was close. These guys were special in their own ways. And I think that Justin Fields isn't getting talked in, about enough as QB two, because again, I, I think that we all believe Zach Wilson's probably going to go number two, but I got to give Justin Fields his props here. I'll have him going number two, even though it could be either guy. That puts you up at number three. Yeah, so if uh, if I'm Miami here on the clock, I would love to get out of this pick. Looking at the the board and how it falls, you know, needing some wide receiver. I think that uh, you know, looking at the board, taking a wide receiver here at number three overall really doesn't fit. You know, I would right. love to trade back and let a right. team come up here for a quarterback. So I'm going to try to do that. So looking at the teams that might need a quarterback here. I'm eyeing one specifically there, either at number eight overall with Carolina uh, or number nine overall with Denver. So I guess I'll throw this to you, Trevor, like number eight overall. Is that a possibility for Carolina to come up? I know that you're controlling that team. Oh, if yeah. Not, I'm going to move up from uh, from nine with Denver. Well, I think that when you look at Carolina and we were going to have this conversation at some point, whenever Carolina was picking, they've clearly made it known that they're going to get aggressive. Like, and, and I think that number three is the prime spot to do it because you don't probably have to pay as much of a premium for number two. If you think the quarterback that you like most, whether it's Zach Wilson or Justin Fields is going to be there at number three, you wait for Miami because they're more likely to do a deal with you. The only thing that's really in the way of, I think the Panthers trading up for one of these guys is Deshaun Watson. Like, do they right, believe right. that they could possibly get Deshaun Watson? If they do, they might not trade up. But, you know, if you're looking for an ideal trade partner in a make-believe mock draft scenario, I would tell you that the perfect partner, yeah, would be Carolina. So I, I would say if you want to deal with Carolina, we could talk about a negotiation for sure. Yeah, let's do that. Let's see what Carolina can, uh, okay. can give up here to come up and get one of these quarterbacks. Okay, all right. So... He's offering it's it's going to start with the first round pick this year, first round pick next year. You're only moving five spots, so I I I would tell you that they could probably get away with a 3, but because it's a quarterback that's on the board, they might have to overpay a little bit and I would say right. let's do a 2. Let's do a 2 this year. So a first first this year, a second this year, and a first next year. And I think that gets it done. Well, what do you you're the one controlling it? What do you say? No, that definitely would get it done because okay. if you you know, I'm only moving back to eight. So being able to accumulate more picks, I'm gonna have Miami's gonna have more picks than they know what to do with. So yeah, get uh, get down there, get to number eight okay. overall, and then adding right. on those. Yeah, definitely. Let's do the one, the one, and a two. Okay. So normally the way that we do this is whoever was controlling the team originally. Like the Panthers are in an even spot at number eight. If they trade up to an odd spot, I'll, I would still pick for the Panthers. Yeah, because they were yeah. they were the even spot. Um, but we got we can you know we can talk about this one together since it is an odd spot now. But I mean, this is this is Zach Wilson for me. You know, I, I would think that it would be either Zach Wilson or Justin Fields. Is there any disagreement there? No, I think that Trey Lance after his pro day could push himself into this conversation, but Good. with the NFL and how much that they seem to love Zach Wilson and his ability to make plays off platform, I think it's Zach Wilson here. Yeah, I would I would agree with you. So that puts me up with the Atlanta Falcons at four. Man, I thought about, you know, when I look at the moves that Atlanta has made and how they've gone about this offseason, especially the restructuring of Matt Ryan's deal, I don't think they're going to take a quarterback. And if they're not taking a quarterback at number four, trading back makes the most sense. I wrote an article about this for the Draft Network where if you look at Ryan's deal, it's a lot less cap space this year, so it gives them more flexibility, but it's more dead cap next year and the year after because it converted his base salary into a signing bonus that they prorated, which was $7 million over the next in each of the next three years. So it makes it more difficult for him to move on. And where we entertained like, okay, they could probably move on from Matt Ryan next year if they wanted to, if they drafted a Justin Fields or a Trey Lance. That is less likely now. I don't think their needs really line up for this board. If they want to go get Kyle Pitts, they can. 
But I really do think that them trading back makes a lot of sense, especially when you look at their GM, Terry Fontenot. He comes from the New Orleans tree of front office management. They love being aggressive in the draft. And a way that you ensure that you have the ability to get aggressive, do lots of trade-ups, do things like that in the future, is if you trade back from number four right, right now. If right. you're not picking a quarterback, I think you're trading back. And so when I look at teams that could potentially trade up to go get a Trey Lance, I look at the Denver Broncos at nine, the San Francisco 49ers at 12, and the New England Patriots at number 15. Do any of those three teams seem more likely to you to move up to four to go get Lance? The, the most likely, I think, would be Denver because they want to okay. compete. They want to compete in that division. And if you're going to compete with Patrick Mahomes, you have to have a star quarterback. You have to have the firepower at QB to be able to do it. Sure. Uh, so I think, you know, of course you mentioned Carolina and Deshaun Watson, like that definitely could, uh, could play a role in it as well. I think San Francisco from a scheme fit, Trey Lance would be just so much fun. I think Kyle, he Shane would be would love to get his hands on him as far as new England, man, it would be super aggressive, but I don't know if they're going to have enough draft capital capital to leapfrog those other two teams. So I think, for Atlanta, trying to stay within the top 10 probably makes a lot of sense, too. So mm -hmm. I would say let's start with Denver and let's see what okay. we can do there. All right. So, so you're controlling Denver and and we can get it. We can get a deal done here. So Atlanta's moving back from Rob. I think you should do it the other way. By the way, I feel like the, the Broncos should be the one offering, right? I feel like we got to do it like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. There we go. So we're talking four to nine. Five it's pick gonna be, jump. It's probably going to be very similar to the Carolina move. Yeah, it, you might be able to get away with a first next year and a third this year. You might be able to do that. Yeah, if you add, yeah, it, Denver's got to add. Denver's got to add a first next year and then a third this year, and then like maybe one of their later picks, like a six rounder, because they have all those seventh rounders. Yeah, yeah. See what that does for them. What's the likelihood? Okay, this is pretty this is pretty likely. So what do you what do you think about this here? Oh no, did we just lose Kyle? Oh no, we just lost Kyle. All right, so now I gotta talk about this before we get Kyle back. I can hear you. Oh, okay. Now I can now I can see you. Now you're back. You're back. You're back. I don't know. You just I don't know what the heck. You went uh you went to the upside down. You you went to the other side real quick and now you, now you came back, so we're good. All right. Sorry about that. So we got a first. So the the trade here, I was I was saying, are you good with this? It's a first rounder this year, a first rounder next year. It's a third this year, and then a six. But you got all those seventh round picks. So if you're controlling Denver, you go with this. You go up and get Trey Lance. Yeah, because I think, I think so for Denver, you got to make that. You got to be aggressive. You got to go get your quarterback. And a court, this quarterback's not going to fall very far, right? If, yeah, uh, I don't he, think so. So yeah, go get. Uh, yeah, go get uh, Trey Lance here with that that first next year. You also could probably then trade Drew Locke for, I don't know, like a third round pick. That's, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, if that, I, if that, yeah, I don't, I don't think you get a second for him because I'm thinking about no. that. So I don't know. I feel like, I feel like a team might believe in Locke for like a third or a fourth round pick. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm totally crazy. Used quarterback uh, contracts and draft value is always all over the place. Oh, so I never yeah. know how to do it. So then you're, you're up with the Broncos. We go and Trey Lance here. Yeah, this isn't. Yeah, this is an easy decision. I'm a huge, huge fan of Trey Lance. So uh, cool. I have him in summer scouting. I had him as, actually as QB1 based off his 2019 game. I loved him Ooh. over Trevor Lawrence. And of course, it was close with Lawrence, but yet I sure. think that yeah, Lance yeah. has the potential to be special. So four quarterbacks off the board here in the first four picks, man. It's crazy. I, I think that it's going to be all four that are going off at least within the first six. Like, we're going to have moves yep. happen. There's too many QB needy teams. You're up then with the Cincinnati Bengals at number five. Yeah, this one's an easy one. If you're looking at Joe Burrow and trying to protect him, it's got to be Penny Sewell. Still super young, but the upside yep. is just tremendous for what he yep. put on tape at 19, 20 years old. I, is he even going to be 21 by the time that draft day rolls around? Like he's he will, be he will be, young. he will be 20 and a half. So he will have six months until he's even 21. That's crazy. So yeah, I think uh, the, you know, he's already a polished prospect in and of, you know, what he put on tape at Oregon mm -hmm. in uh, 2019 and has the potential to just get even better. So yeah, Penny Sewell here to lock down to be that left tackle of the future for Cincinnati. 
I I'm I'm finishing up my scouting reports uh, on a lot of these guys right now, and I went back and really watched a lot of a lot of film on Penny Sewell, and I recently watched Rayshon Slater as well. And I know some people are kind of back and forth with who might be offensive tackle one. For me, it's not close. It, it it's it, it's not close. And I love and I love Slater too. That like that's not in any way a knock on Slater. I think Slater's an easy top fifteen overall pick. But it's not right. close with him and Sewell. Sewell was putting out that kind of tape at age 18, 19. No way. It's amazing. So Penny Sewell going number five. I'm up with the Philadelphia Eagles at number six. Kyle Pitts, let's do it. Making it happen. Obviously going to move on from Zach Ertz. They're a team that likes to run a lot of multi tight end sets, although might look a little bit different there. Actually, it probably would look a decent amount different there with the with the new head coach. But Kyle Pitts is going to be able to it's he's going to be able to give it to you wherever you want oh wait can you i uh, don't worry about it don't worry about it rob rob said he took jalen waddle for the <laughs> the lions he accidentally double clicked that's i mean rob might have like a he might be a fortune teller like he might be able to see the future because <laughs> were you gonna go at, waddle i think i was gonna go waddle here now there were some players that i was gonna talk a little bit more in depth and uh mm -hmm. but and consider but I think either Jamar Chase or Jalen Waddle make a ton of sense here for Detroit. Now, I don't think that Jared Goff is the long-term answer. <laughs> so I think if you can bring in the talented players into the building, I could see them going defense. I could see them uh, maybe even, you know, looking at the interior of the offensive line uh, with a Rayshon Slater or something like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I'm going to give him a playmaker here. Tyrell Williams. And uh, yeah, it's not enough for me. I'm going to go Jalen Waddle. So well done, okay. Rob. All right. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for the, thanks for the guest pick, Rob. The celebrity shot there. Miami Dolphins picking at eight. So they were actually at number three. So you have the ultimate decision here at number eight. But I think the Dolphins could go a lot of different ways. Jamar Chase is still on the board. Although he, I think that they would have loved to get themselves Waddle because he could play more in the right. slot. But I still have faith that Jamar Chase could be a great impact player for them. What do you think? Well, let's not even, let's not pretend that Jamar Chase didn't play in the slot at LSU. He did kick sure. inside periodically i mean they even put him in the backfield for goodness sake at times so i think jamar chase brings that versatility and i don't think that having you know Devonte parker and preston williams like everyone is talking about preston williams as if he's this bona fide locked in starter you know this guy who's just a proven asset well he's an undrafted free agent for a reason like there's mm -hmm. nothing preventing them from going jamar chase here and replacing preston williams or keeping Williams on the field and moving chase inside. So yeah, Jamar chase or Jalen Waddle, you know, I traded down from three with the mindset. Let's, let's get value here. Let's get some players that are still going to be on the board at wide receiver. So either Jalen Waddle or Jamar chase, which everyone's here, I'm perfectly fine with either of them. So give me Jamar chase for Miami at number eight overall. Okay. All right. So now the Atlanta Falcons are up at number nine, man, they probably have a huge safety need, but I'm not going to take Trayvon Merrick for even as much as I like him right here. They also have a big edge rusher need. Don't attack McKinley anymore. If Charles Harris, who's I think an, an unrestricted free agent, Dante Fowler, who is overpaid for how he's playing right now. I mean, like, right. Man, do I, do I go Jalen Phillips here? I mean, like Jalen Phillips is the only edge talent I'd probably consider in the top 12, but Man, this early. I don't think they need a linebacker that bad because they've got because they've got Micah Parsons. What about corner? Hmm. Corner or O line is what I'm looking at now. They got McGarry, have Lindstrom. They got Jake Matthews. Oh man, I might want Rayshon Slater at this point. I was about to say Slater, you could kick him inside to guard. I actually scouted him as an interior offensive lineman. Yeah. This might be the move here, just up in the offensive line. Cause I'm okay, so I'm thinking either Slater or Patrick Sertan. Rob's talking about a second trade back, get more assets. But who would uh, the only problem is, Rob, I don't know who's on the board that somebody would trade up for. Like, I don't think anybody's trading up for Mac Jones. I just don't think it's gonna happen. No, Slater would be the only other one if a team views him as an offensive tackle. I don't think you're moving up into the top 10 for an interior offensive lineman. Okay, I think it's going to be Slater, but let me take a, take a look at the Jeff chart one more time. Oh, Kendall Sheffield, Isaiah Oliver, AJ Terrell. Mm, I don't know about that. No, I'm going, I'm, I'm going with... 
I'm actually going Caleb Farley. Caleb Farley's my CB1. I like him better as an off-coverage player, but I think that he has the skills and the IQ, the instincts processing to really learn how to play almost any system. So I'm actually going to go Caleb Farley to put opposite AJ Terrell. You need good corners, man. The NFL is just getting too good on the offensive side of the ball. There's too many good passing weapons. Caleb Farley to the Falcons at nine. Love You're it. Up at 10. I have Ca- I have Caleb Farley as my CB one too. I mean, Woo-hoo! incredible upside. He nuts. Uh, already still learning the position. So, I mean, just for him to step in and did what he did in 2019 and then sit out 2020, I think that the sky's the limit for this kid. Uh, okay, yeah. so Dallas Cowboys at number 10. I think nothing that they did in free agency uh, moves me off of this. I mean, re-signing Jordan Lewis, uh, CJ Goodwin. Uh, <laughs> now, let's take Patrick Sertan here. Uh, Sertan's silky smooth in coverage. Uh, I think it's a hard evaluation for me, at least it was, where it, Teams just didn't throw the ball to Pat, uh, to Patrick Sertan's side of the field. So, like, I'm trying mm-hmm. to scout Sertan, and it's very difficult because, you know, you can see the movement ability. You can see that he's sticky in man coverage, but yet you can't see the, like, I have, like, an incomplete grade on him for ball skills <laughs> because they just never threw the ball his way. But that does speak sure. to how how much teams respect him. So, Sertan here in the top 10 for a team that desperately needs corner. I'll go uh, Sertan there to the Cowboys. All right, got to pick it up. Got to pick up the pace a little bit on this one, which is actually on me as the point guard of this video. But New York Giants up at eleven. I'm gonna go with Devontae Smith. I want to pick Devontae Smith for him. I still think that they need more wide receiver talent. I know that they could say that they like some guys in the room, but all of a sudden, if you take that New York Giants wide receiver room and you subtract Golden Tate, which they've already done, and then you throw in Devontae Smith and you throw in Kenny Galladay, I mean, that's 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 a lot different. That's a lot more impactful for me. So I'm I'm gonna go with Devontae Smith at eleven. All right. Now you're so, up at now are you up at 12? Yeah, so for San Francisco corner, I still think is a big need for them. Uh quarterback, you know, you could talk about Jimmy Garoppolo, but the difference for me between Jimmy Garoppolo and Mac Jones is not enough to make that pick here. The offensive line is probably where I want to focus, but bringing in Alex Mack, I mean Trent Williams got paid like a quarterback there. So, uh but I am I think race on Slater is too good to pass up here, especially for that scheme and how much they move side to side uh, in that outside zone rushing. So I'm going to go race on Slater here, uh, Northwestern, and I'll kick him inside. And then if we do have an issue on the outside, I know that he presents that versatility. Uh, if Trent Williams, something happens to Trent Williams or Mike McGlinchey, I can move him to the outside. So Trent or uh, race on Slater here at number 12 overall. Chargers got Corey Lindsley. Hope the interior offensive line a little bit. Still going to go tackle though. I'm going to go Christian Derrissaw. They still need tackle. They need tackle help. They needed to make multiple offensive line moves. And I think Corey Lindsay was a good one, but I, I still think that they definitely need tackle. So we're going Christian Derrissaw on the left side to play left tackle for the Chargers at 13. All right. Minnesota. What did they Minnesota. Need? Minnesota's got, uh, well, not corner need, that's for sure, because they signed Patrick <laughs> Peterson out of nowhere, which I did not expect. I really did not think that Minnesota would be the team to do that. They signed Dalvin Tomlinson as well, so interior defensive line they're probably not going after. Uh, they moved on from Riley Reef. They re-signed Rashad Hill, but I still think that left tackle could be a place that they look. Um, looking at the board here. I think, uh, yeah, you know, just like offensive line feels like the move. Offensive line, yeah. You know what? And I'm going to go with that versatility too because I do think that Minnesota could use some just overall talent on the offensive line at multiple positions. Mm-hmm. And Elijah Vera Tucker out of Perfect. USC does present that, right? He presents that versatility where you can plug him in at tackle, see how he works on the left side. If it doesn't work out, then great. We can kick him inside. And I think that he has incredible upside and potential as a guard. So Elijah Vera Tucker here at 14 overall to the Minnesota Vikings. Would the Patriots go Mac Jones? No way, right? No. They're not going to do that. Right? Wait, no, they can't. Go, no way. Did we go off? I'm picking evens. Oh, yeah. How did we get off? <laughs> when did we When did I, we, When I, did we when get did that up here? <laughs> uh, I picked for the Cowboys at 10, so... Oh, that's, it's because uh, I traded back happened. from, uh, yeah, yep. I traded back from four to nine. That's how we got messed up. Okay. Not all right. Well, we're four, back on track four here. picks to realize that took us four. We picks. were just, all right. We were in the zone. Hopefully you guys like the picks that we made, but I will let you <laughs> reset it now and you can pick at 15 for the pads. 
Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm looking at wide receiver. Nikhil Harry, uh, nope, no thank you. Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne, they don't really do it for me, even though they got paid. So I'm going to go Rashad Bateman here. I'm going to get Bateman into the top 15. He presents a another receiving weapon. If they are going to move forward and they're going to rebuild and build around Cam, get him some weapons, I'm mm -hmm. going to go with Rashad Bateman here, who I'm a big, big fan of out of Minnesota. So Bateman, 15 overall, New England Patriots. All right, hold on. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta remind myself of everything the Cardinals have done in free agency because they truly think they are on a championship track. JJ yep. Watt, Rodney yep. Hudson, AJ Green. They lose Patrick Peterson, so I think corner starts. To, I mean, immediately comes a big need for him. Do I want JC Horn or do I want Greg Newsom? Who would they want more? I think they might want JC Horn more. I think they might want that profile of that lockdown, that man coverage kind of a guy. Cause you take away somebody like Patrick Peterson who just knows how to do it. You got to replace him with somebody who again, knows how to do it, has that mentality. So we're going to go, I'm going to go with JC Horn here at 16. I think that he is the corner that they would like more, especially with Peterson on his way out. All right. Las Vegas. Hello. Offensive lineman. Any hmm? offensive line, yeah. I will take <laughs> anyone who who has an OT by their name or I O L. I'm going to go Samuel Cosme here though, because looking at the tackle need that uh, that they have, I mean they like them some big physical presences on the offensive line. So Samuel Cosme at six seven, three hundred plus, just put up an absurd number in the forty yard dash. Like he's incredibly athletic. I think that either he can slide over to the right side, you move Colton Miller over to the right side. It doesn't really matter. I'm just looking for talented players because this was the strength of your team. You need to protect Derek Carr in order for him to be successful. So Samuel Cosme, 17 overall. Man, Jalen Phillips is still on the board. Mm, Miami would love him. I think that's better than a running back, even having their pick of whoever they might want. Because Miami picks at the top of the second round, too. So I'm, I would leave running back for that spot. Oh, Wusu Koromo and Micah Parsons are both perfect for this defense. But I think they need edge rushers. Who is there? Okay. All right. Hold on. I'm looking at the depth chart. I'm making sure that I know what kind of players they currently have. At they edge? Got, yeah. Like guys that they'll, they'd rush off the edge. They don't have Lawson uh, they anymore. Lost both Van Noy and uh, Shaq Lawson. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. So actually, I'm gonna go Aziz Ojolari. I'm gonna oh, take yeah. Ojolari here. He's coming off a phenomenal showing at his pro day. Showed up bigger than I think a lot of people expected. He's got the length. He's got the speed. He's got the explosiveness. He's got good tape. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going Ojolari here at 18. I, I Phillips, I think is better, and Phillips is still on the board. Jalen Phillips from University of Miami. I just don't know how much teams are going to trust him. He'll go off in the fir in the first round. I I'm sure of it. I'm just not exactly sure where. So for Miami, we're going to get that kind of stand up outside pass rusher. I, I would go with uh, Ojolari. Okay, uh, Washington up. I'm still looking. Uh, at the offensive line here, of course, Ryan Fitz. I really love what Washington has done. Oh, it's been so fun, Curtis man. Samuel, Ryan Fitzpatrick, uh, William Jackson. Like, let's have some fun. Yep. So yep. looking at someone to protect Ryan Fitzpatrick at this point of his career, even though if he gets knocked down, he's going to come back up just grinning ear to ear. So uh, I'm going to go Tevin Jenkins here, Oklahoma State. I'm a big, big fan of Jenkins and what he can do mean Mean player, plays with a mean streak, and I think that uh, he can provide some solid protection there for Fitz at uh, 19 overall. Yeah, he just plays pissed off. He really does. Uh, Mac Jones is still on the board for your Chicago Bears, but I'm not going to do that to you uh, unless you. you really wanted him. Okay, okay, nope. all right. So I'm not nope. going I'm I'm to do that then. Who are the wide receivers who are left? Who do we got a wide receiver? Bateman's off the board. I mean, Tony's probably the only one that they would really consider. Maybe Terrace Marshall, but who? What about offensive line? What about offensive tackle? Because yeah, tackles think, their big uh, tackles their biggest need, right? You need a, a right tackle. Bobby Massey being uh, released there. You need someone to slide in at right tackle. So Mayfield's probably your best bet. Okay. Do you need? Would you want somebody to like day one starter for you? Like I need this dude to be able to play week one. 
Because if that's probably. the if that's the case, then I'd probably take Eichenberg because I'd trust him more. I think he's more controlled. Yeah. But Mayfield, no doubt, gives you the higher upside. So I would kind of it would kind of depend does which have one. The you... versatility? Does he have the versatility to slide over to the right? I don't know. I I mean he's, he he played. I don't think he played right. I don't. I don't think no, so. He was left. No, he was definitely no, I, left I, like I mean, more, from, more recently. I. I love Eichenberg. I love his tape. I think that he is definitely is pro ready. I don't think that he has like an enormous ceiling, but I do think that he's definitely pro ready and ready to contribute day one. So I wouldn't hate that pick at all. Left tackle, left tackle. No, I think, no, it's, it's, it's exclusively left tackle tape. All right. So, all right, we'll go with Mayfield. I guess we'll go with Mayfield. Maybe you kick him on the other side and you just, you hope that he could play right a little bit more. All right. You're up at 21. All right, uh, Indianapolis looking at left tackle there, obviously with Anthony Costanzo. Um, you could look at wide receiver here as well, but I'm not a huge fan of Terrace Marshall in the first round. Kadarius Tony, not really. I I'm going to go Eichenberg. You know, we just finished talking about him. I think this might be a little bit early, but when you've seen kind of a run here on the offensive linemen that we have, I mean, how many have gone up to this point? It's a lot. So I'm going to go Eichenberg here. It might be a little bit early, but does present you with the ability to step out onto the field day one and contribute all Notre Dame left side, baby left guard, yep. Quentin Nelson left tackle, Liam Meikenberg just yep. bringing the Irish, just bringing the Irish to Indianapolis, Tennessee Titans at 22. Oh, Tennessee Titans fans were clamoring for Rashad <laughs> Bateman and he is long gone. Greg Newsom, I think, probably makes the most sense at this point. I mean, they definitely corner. They move on from Adoree Jackson They move on from Malcolm Butler they got to go get a corner. And so I think that yeah. I, I think that you got to take the best one that's on the board. And that's definitely Greg Newsom right now. Uh, right. New York Jets. Uh, yep. This is easy for me, man. I don't know about you, but I'm taking Jalen Phillips here. This is a slide for Phillips. I love his tape. And I think that he is oh, still yeah. just getting better and better. So for Robert Sala to come in, and he needs corner. He needs edge presence for his scheme to be successful uh, to get Jalen Phillips here to pair with uh, with Carl Lawson it would just be a ton of fun. So Jalen Phillips, 23 overall. That, that automatically becomes like one of my favorite pass rush duos right there. A lot yep. of potential there with Jalen Phillips and Carl Lawson. That's fun. So I'm glad, I'm glad that you did that there. Pittsburgh Steelers love offensive tackle, but I don't think there's one that you'd really want to take at this point because I think all of the best ones are off the board. Not really sure about Alex Leatherwood. Instead, we're going to the interior offensive line, Rob. And we're picking Landon Dickerson. I, folks, the dude's tape is nuts. He is, he is so good, okay? You have, all right, the injury history, right? That's the big thing. He's had four season-ending surgeries, four season-ending injuries in his five seasons of play at the college level. I get it. I don't know if he's going to be a first rounder because of it, but my Lord, over the last two years when he's been healthy, he's, he's incredible. He's massive at six foot six, 325 pounds. He can play guard dude. It's it, he does so much for for your offensive line. And I think that the, the Steelers have an interior need as much as an offensive tackle need. And so we're picking the best offensive lineman that's left in Landon Dickerson. He's like the epitome of a Pittsburgh Steelers offensive lineman, too. Yeah, feels I, like it. He really yeah. does. All right, you're up at 25. All right, Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Um, Cam Robinson being franchise tag is interesting. I think that you know you could look at offensive tackle, but there really isn't someone that I want to draft here that I see as a significant upgrade over Cam Robinson. So wide receiver, Marvin Jones coming in. you got DJ Chark and then LaVisca Chenault now. I think that that kind of takes care of it, but... Looking at, uh, I'm looking at two players here, and I want your opinions. Mm -hmm. Trayvon Merrick, the safety out of okay. TCU. I think that yeah. even though Rayshon Jenkins entering, I don't think that that prevents them from taking Trayvon Merrick here. A kind of jack of all trades can line up everywhere for you on the D in the secondary. But then also, tight end is a big need for them. And right. Kyle Pitts gets all the hype, deservedly so. Uh, but man, Pat Fryermuth is a special player. I think that he, he's good. He it reminds me a lot of Travis Kelsey as far as his movability at that size. You know, those pivot routes, I've seen him be able to do that at Penn State. Now he's got a lot of developing to, to get to that type of impact of Travis Kelsey, of course. But yet, I do think that if you're bringing in Trevor Lawrence, you can give 
him, Pat Fryermuth here as a reliable receiving option over the middle of the field. So you know what? I'm going to take Pat Fryermuth here at uh, okay. 25 overall. No, I, I could definitely see this. I wonder if it's a little early for Fryermuth, but Urban Meyer has said multiple times that like they need to get better at tight end. Like That is a priority for right. them to get better at tight end. And so I think that the Fryermuth edition here at the back end of the first round, them not really wanting to risk it because they have an early second round pick. But right. if you really need the guy and you like the guy, and if, go get the guy. And if Just we were doing it, if we were doing a, if we were doing a two round mock draft, that might be where I would take it into consideration. And I would say, mm -hmm. okay, I might take Merrick here and then see if I can get, but with the fact that we're just doing the one round, I wanted to get Frymo's name in here um, yeah. for Jacksonville Jaguars fans. Makes sense. Makes sense. 26, Cleveland Browns. If this player makes it this far, I mean, they're going to jump on it all day. I think that Iwusu Koromoa is perfect for what the Cleveland Browns are looking for. He is a player who could do so many different things for you. You don't really want him in between the tackles a lot as a traditional linebacker, but what he could do for you in space, having him as a will, playing him in the box, playing him as a, a, a slot option against certain tight ends and, and certain wide receivers. I mean, he can do it all for you. And so I think the Cleveland's looking for that kind of a player to put in the middle of their defense. I don't think he lasts to 26. I know his projections a little bit Maybe. difficult because, you know, he plays such a unique style, but someone is going to take Jeremiah Usukoromo in the top 20. He is a top 20 lock, I think. I just don't know who it's going to be. So if he gets to 26, I mean, no brainer for Cleveland. That secondary in defense is a ton of fun now. Ronnie Harrison, John Johnson, who they signed. You have yeah. Obusu Koromoa, who can be that right. versatile piece. Denzel Ward. Yeah, it's a ton of fun. Yep. Uh, all right, so you took uh, Koromoa there. I'm up at 27 with the Baltimore Ravens. Now, Edge still remains a big need for them, even though they re-signed Tyus Bowerser, uh, Pernell McPhee. Obviously, at this point of his career, isn't going to be a significant contributor. But so someone like Pay is in consideration for me. They could swing, the fe swing for the fences with Gregory Rousseau. But Micah Parsons still being here on the board at 27 overall is a little Ooh. crazy to me, especially with LJ Fort not being tendered and hitting the open market. Now they could bring him back, but yet uh, Parsons here presents you with some versatility too. Like his reps at edge when they did line him up there are actually pretty good. So if you try him out at linebacker, it doesn't work for whatever reason, put him at edge. And I think that he can succeed there too. So Parsons here at 27, and this is just because a really talented player fell all the way to 27. Parsons is so good. I mean, he can't, he, he arrived at Penn state as a pass rush prospect. Like he was a right. he was a, a weak side defensive end when he came to Penn State, and so he's got that on his background. He can absolutely play three four outside linebacker for you. So he's, I mean, yeah, he's shoot. If the Ravens get him, that's just an embarrassment of riches. Saints got an edge need. Don't have Trey Hendrickson anymore. Don't have a corner need. I mean, Quiddy Pay is here. This just makes too much sense for me. Quiddy Pay making it all the way to number twenty eight. This is almost a dream for the Saints, but you never know what's going to happen with this edge rush class. I think that uh, you saw a lot of money going to the edge rushers early on day one of the tampering period, and that big reason why is because there's just so much unknown with this edge rush clash. But you know, if you're picking Quiddy Pay here at the back end of the first round, I think it's a perfectly good investment. So we're going to go Quiddy Pay here. Yeah, is that Trey Hendrickson? Trey Hendrickson replacement. Uh, makes a ton yep. of sense. Um, all right. So Green Bay pick 29. They still need to address a, a need that they had last year. Uh, and they didn't address it with their first two picks. And that was interior of the defensive line. Barmore is still here on the board out of Alabama. Big physical presence. Mm -hmm. uh, consistency is the name of his game. He needs to improve that. Right. But I think that you saw the upside in the college football playoffs. So Christian Barmore, 29 overall to the Green Bay Packers feels a huge need for them. Yeah, when he's on, he's the best pass rusher of the interior defensive line group. And it's not a great interior defensive line group this year, but it's not. he's clearly the best one to choose from. You put him next to Kenny Clark, and I think he could have a lot of success. Buffalo Bills at 30. All right, let me remind myself of what the Bills did in free agency, because I know that they made a couple of moves. And Bills fans will be mad at me if I don't uh, know exactly what happened. So they have Emmanuel Sanders, right? That was the big one. Um, Darrell yeah. Williams, they... Agreed to that three-year deal with him. Matt Milano was also the big resign. Came with Levi Wallace. Agreed to him with a one-term contract. I still think they need corner two. Who's there for corner, Rob? Can you remind me of the uh, cornerback board? Stokes. All right, all right. Stokes fresh right. off of that uh, that four two eight or whatever he ran. Dude, listen, I was in Miami for the HOA combine when Stokes ran a 
four, two, four, four, two, eight, like whatever you want to call it with the official, it was somewhere in the four twos. And I remember tweeting that out. And so many people were like, I don't believe this. And I don't blame him because, or I don't blame those people because there's reason to be skeptical about non-sanctioned pro day and just workout right. events. But this one had the official people who normally do the combine, like the exact people, not just the same company, the exact people who do the things for the combine. And I remember the person behind the computer who was running the programming for it. He just kind of looked at us and he's like, that's the real number. Like that's, we, we would have put up on the board as an unofficial time four two four, And we were all kind of like freaking out about it. And then he ran it again at his pro day. So I thought that that was funny. Edge rusher. Let me see edge rusher. I know we haven't talked, taken a lot of edge rushers. Ah, Rousseau is still there. I think that that's that, that one kind of makes sense. No, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Eric Stokes. Give me Eric Stokes. They need the, they need the, uh, they need the cornerback upgrade. They need the new blood there. They need a potential CB2. So I'm gonna go with Eric Stokes. Uh, Kansas City was in the market for Trent Williams, obviously moving on from Eric Fisher and Mitchell Schwartz. They need mm -hmm. OT help. Now, I'm going to lean on you because I have not watched Dylan Raiden's yet. Is mm -hmm. he worth selecting here in the first round? Because the other guy that I'm considering is Alex Leatherwood. And me personally, I'm yeah. not taking Leatherwood anywhere near the first round. Yeah. I, I don't know. Ra Raiden's is still Ra Raiden's is still a project to me because I think he's obviously got the great tape at North Dakota State, but it's going to be a jump. It's going to be an acclimation period. So for a team, you know, the, the Chiefs have kind of like put themselves in a tough spot here because right for for a team that wants to compete right away, that has to get a guy in there to start right away. I love Liam Eikenberg for this spot. Like if Eikenberg can make it to 31, I think he's the perfect selection for them because yeah. he is so refined and controlled that you play him in week one and you can just start him right away. And not that he won't have a learning curve, but he won't be a massive liability. I'm not so sure that Dylan Radens or Alex Leatherwood wouldn't be a big liability out there for you. I, I feel like Leatherwood would probably be your better bet if you've got to get a guy to start there right away. But Rob's talking about trade back. Who's popping I, up? Like who's yeah. on the, who's on the overall board right now? Who do we got? Uh, I could potentially be for a quarterback. Mac Jones is still sitting here. Oh uh, yeah. You get the fifth year option. Um, I, don't who, I don't know who that would be though. What about the New Jaguars England jumping New, New England popping back up? Would they do that? Would New England do Jones? that? I really don't think so, but who might do that? Okay, we got New England. We've got the 49ers, maybe the Washington football team. Yeah, I I guess, but that's a hmm. that's quite a jump. I'm looking at the guys that are in like that top. I mean, San Francisco could afford to do it. It wouldn't be that big of a jump. Detroit, if they viewed Jones as a much of an upgrade over, uh, I, I think a trade back is definitely possible looking at the overall board, you know, and how it's fallen as far as offensive tackle. I think you're absolutely right. If Liam Eikenberg is here, I think that's just a send it in pick. Like, I just think that that's mm -hmm. a locked in, but I just don't see anyone else moving up here for one of these, like Najee Harris, the team's not trading back up into the first round for running back. I think Trayvon Merrick is good, but I don't think that you trade up for a safety, like just as far as positional value. So, you know, what? I'm just going to stay here and I'm just going to take Dylan Radins and say okay. that we, we plugged a major hole here. Uh, I think that it might be a little bit early, you know, but yet at the same time, you need offensive tackle here if you're Kansas city. So uh, pairing him alongside Joe Tooney and Kyle long, who you brought back out of retirement. So uh, you're, you're starting to provide Patrick Mahomes with a little bit more protection there. So Raiden's here at 31. Rob, can you show me interior offensive line? Give me a Wyatt Davis. We got Creed Humphrey. I don't, I don't think the Buccaneers would draft Creed Humphrey. I mean, I mean, I think that they might think about interior offensive line, but they don't truly need it that much. What about running back? Let me see running back. We haven't had any running backs no, go off the board, Najee's, right? Najee's still on the board. Yeah, this one's, yeah, all right. We're going Najee Harris. We're going Najee Harris at 32 for the Buccaneers to round out the mock draft. Whoa, there we go. Mid free agency mock draft all finished. Rob's going to scroll through the picks so you guys can see and recap everything we did. But uh, Kyle, man, that was a lot. Of, that was a lot of fun. I appreciate it. Was there a, did you have a, a favorite pick that you were able to make or a moment that was tough? I mean, we struggled there at the end with the Chiefs pick. That might get a little dicey for them if, there's not a lot of offensive linemen, but uh, was there a pick that you really loved that kind of stood out among any other ones? 
I mean, you're looking at it right on the screen right now, which is Rayshon Slater to the San Francisco 49ers. I think that yeah, that's sure. a dream landing spot for them and situation for Slater to fall outside the top 10 for them. So, uh, but no, my my personal like favorite was that we didn't even realize that we messed up the order for like pick 10 to 14 <laughs> uh, and just caught it then. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I wonder how long it would have gone before we actually, uh, right. actually noticed it. <laughs> I'm glad you caught it because I... I'm doing so many of these. I'm just like chugging along to the next pick. And so like, I've, I don't, I don't even know if I would have messed it up. And so, or I, I wouldn't even notice that, that we messed it up there. That was, that was a lot of fun, man. I appreciate you joining me on short notice. That is. So everybody give Kyle a round of applause. Go follow him on Twitter at, uh, at Kyle Yates. And, um, what, wait, what your official channel, your official Twitter handle is at Kyle what? Y NFL. Kyle Y NFL. I knew there was an NFL in there. I knew it was, I knew it was your name, but I, I, Knew there was an NFL in there. Yeah, I didn't. You're good. I didn't want to mess it up. So everybody go file. Kyle. Everybody go follow Kyle. He does a fantastic job covering the league as a whole. Also, if you're a fantasy football guy, I mean, he's got to be one of your number one sources. Every everything that the guys are doing over there, at fantasy pros, is fantastic work. And then they're also churning out all kinds of content for the NFL draft as well. So Kyle, I really really appreciate you joining me, man. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me on. We're gonna have a what we believe is post free agency mock draft i suppose that guys can sign after that if they want to but a lot of the hype is going to be is going to be gone we're going to have a lot more guys that are going to go to certain teams between now and sunday but sunday night that's the next time that we're doing a live mock draft it'll be me and zach again so we'll get to compare the mock that we did last sunday with the one that we're about to do this sunday and whew, the draft needs are going to be a lot different it's going to be a lot of fun we will see you guys on sunday night